真佛佛，真呀，引领真佛，今天真你啦。建设、富强、民主、文明、和谐、美丽的社会主义现代化强国，努力奋斗。Time is the great witness and chronicler of history. This is the world's longest cross-sea bridge, linking Hong Kong, Zhuhai, and Macau. Through one technological innovation after another, this world-class bridge achieved new heights in the history of engineering. From the initial blueprint to its opening, it was constructed through over 10 years of hard effort. I declare that the Its bridges are a reflection of a nation's capabilities. Through 70 years of unyielding struggle, China has gone from being weak and poor to wealthy and strong, from widespread starvation to moderate prosperity. Today, a new Chinese nation is standing tall in the East, fully reborn and striding confidently into a new era. No one who was alive 70 years ago could have imagined how China would one day be changing from one minute to the next. In 60 seconds, a Fuxing high-speed train covers almost six kilometers. Over 400 million yuan worth of mobile payments are made. 9,600 deliveries reach their recipients. GDP grows by 157 million yuan. 475 meters of rural roads are repaved. And over 30 million yuan's worth of goods are exported. From the coldest glaciers in the north to the warmest shores in the south, from the eastern coastal cities to the western hinterland. Miracles are occurring every minute of every day in every corner of China. As a performance assessment, it's outstanding. 
In 2018, China's total GDP was worth over 90 trillion yuan. Back in 1952, the figure had been a mere 67.9 billion. China is the second largest economy in the world. In terms of manufacturing, commodities trade, and foreign currency reserves, it's number one. The country also ranks first in the world for steel and coal production, electricity generation, and high-speed railway and highway coverage. China has built the world's most comprehensive modern industrial system. It's the only country to have every one of its industrial sectors listed in the United Nations International Standard Industrial Classification of All Economic Activities. Today, technological innovation and breakthroughs in key projects are happening every day across China. Tongguan is a tiny village located deep among the mountains of Guizhou province. Thanks to the internet, this remote village's Dong ethnic choir is well known throughout China. The choir is entered in this year's Big Song Festival, which will be broadcast nationally. There's a major development in this year's event. 5G technology will be employed for the live broadcast. The high-speed transmission achieved by 5G technology is changing many aspects of social life through its application in mobile phones and computers, medicine, and smart cars. 5G signals, because they can travel across mountains and valleys, will carry the music of the Dong around the globe. China has built the world's leading supercomputer. Many of its companies have made it onto the Fortune 500 list. It has sent a laboratory, Tiangong 2, into space. And its Jiaolong submersible has explored the mysteries of the deepest oceans. On January 3rd, 2019, after a 26-day journey, the Chang'e 4 probe landed on the far side of the moon. The world watched in fascination as, for the first time in human history, a man-made object explored the darkest and most mysterious parts of the moon's surface. Chang'e is the name given to China's moon exploration program, which was initiated in 2004. The first probe sent to the moon was the Chang'e 1. On November the 5th, 2007, Chang'e 1 successfully completed its third braking maneuver and entered lunar orbit. It was a very special moment for three veteran scientists, commander of the Lunar Exploration Program, Luan Anjie, chief designer, Sun Jiadong, and chief scientist, Ouyang Ziyuan. In 2008, Sun Jiadong passed the baton of moon exploration to his successor, Wu Weiren. The battle, though never easy, is not without its rewards. A thousand minus one equals zero. This saying alludes to the strict standards applied in aerospace endeavors. 
Even the slightest flaw can do irrevocable damage to a spacecraft. In ensuring there are zero flaws and that the highest safety standards are observed, the engineers must work under intense pressure. Everyone has their role to play. Even those who are far removed from the ultimate space mission still make a contribution to its success. Today, people are driven to create innovations by a sense of patriotism. There was a time when China didn't have its own large passenger aircraft and had to import or rent what it needed. In 2007, a large passenger jet development program was launched. A decade later, the program bore its first fruit. Today, the highest skies and deepest seas are all within reach. This is a fact the world now recognizes, thanks in part to China's scientific research and industrial capabilities. The entire population is committed to the country's development. Herdsman Jiri Gala is hanging a satellite tracker around his cow's neck. The animal is now free to roam at will. Jiri Gala knows that far above his head, the Beidou GPS satellite is watching over his herd for him. The GPS software in his phone tells him exactly where his herd is in real time, and even when and where a calf is born. For thousands of years, herdsmen like Jiri Gala would ride on horseback, following their livestock wherever they went. In the past six years, he has got through eight motorbikes, searching for lost cows. The Beidou GPS system has made life much easier. He now has enough spare time to farm an extra two hectares of land. The Beidou GPS system has transformed a thousands of years old way of life. In similar ways, it has helped deep water fishing, precision agriculture, electricity generation, automobile navigation, and search and rescue work. Beidou has even extended its navigation services overseas to the countries involved in the Belt and Road Initiative. The name of the high-speed train, Fuxing, is highly significant. It means revival. High-speed trains have transformed people's concept of space and time. They don't just link prosperous cities, they also reach distant villages. Sanjiang Dong Autonomous County lies deep among the mountains where the Guangxi Zhuang Autonomous Region meets Guizhou and Hunan provinces. The environment is excellent for growing premium quality tea, but the mountains create considerable inconvenience, so much so that the area has historically been impoverished. In May 2015, a high-speed railway connecting Sanjiang to Guangzhou opened. Sanjiang was the first ethnic autonomous county in the country to be the terminus of a bullet train service. The construction of highways and high-speed railways has brought many new opportunities for erstwhile city worker Wu Hui. Along with her husband, she returned to her home village to set up a tea business.
The tea merchants come from all over China. At peak times, 50 tons of tea worth over 6 million yuan is traded daily. Sanjiang now has more than 250,000 tea farmers like Wu. Thanks to the high-speed railway, they've been able to shake off poverty and prosper. The high-speed trains take tea from Sanjiang to every corner of China and bring tourists in the opposite direction. The miracle of high-speed train travel has unfolded across the whole of China. By the end of 2018, the country's high-speed rail network covered 29,000 kilometers, greater than any other country in the world. By 2020, the network is expected to extend for over 30,000 kilometers and to serve 80% of all the country's major cities. The grand blueprint of a high-speed rail network reaching every corner of China is steadily being implemented. Today, manufacturing, production, and innovation are coming together to weave a splendid future for China, a future in which the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation will be realized. The astounding development that is happening all across China is the result of the hard work of the entire population. We China's miraculous growth has already been written into the annals of history. It permeates the happy lives of its 1.4 billion people. Thousands upon thousands of cages stretch into the distance along the coast. These are a series of aquatic farms. China is the world's biggest consumer of seafood. The 65 million tons eaten by its people every year account for 45% of the global total. Of these 65 million tons, 50 million originate from aquatic farms. When it comes to items found in the supermarket, seafood isn't the only product China is growing at specialist farms. In Pinghu, Zhejiang province, the glittering structures are large-scale greenhouses. Thanks to advances in technology, people in China can enjoy a wide array of seasonal vegetables whenever they like. The song, The Wonderful Spotted Pigs of Ningxiang, made this city in Hunan province and its pigs famous all across China. By employing big data and e-commerce platforms, Ningxiang made its pork products a popular food choice for the whole country. In Jiangsu province, mitten crabs are being sold online. Today, almost anything can be purchased on the internet. China now ranks first in the world in online transactions. These days, Yuan Longping, the father of China's hybrid rice, is researching rice that can grow in seawater. Having answered the question, how to feed China, he is now addressing the issue of who else China's rice-growing technology can benefit. Rapid economic development and continued technological advances provide a solid material foundation for people to seek a better life and enjoy better food. is the rice planting season in northeast China.
Zhang Jinghui and his colleagues begin their day before the clock strikes four. Zhang Jinghui has growing rights for 20 hectares of rice paddies. He plans to spend 10 days planting all his seedlings. Several years ago, he bought several items of farming equipment, including harvesters and planting machines. With their help, he has significantly increased efficiency. The northern wilderness was a term once used to describe an area of barren land in the northern part of Heilongjiang province. Today, it is a highly productive commercial grain and modern farming base. During the autumn harvest, the global GPS system installed at Qixing Farms Control Center monitors the real-time location and progress of every single piece of equipment. Based on the information it receives, it can also coordinate and dispatch machines. For decades, generations of farmers worked to develop the land here. They pioneered what became known as the Northern Wilderness Spirit, the spirit of relying on hard work, boldly opening up new paths, and contributing to the greater good through self-sacrifice. In the autumn of 2018, while the harvest was being brought in, President Xi visited Jian Sang Jiang. <laughs> China today can fill the bowls of its people not only with plentiful grain, but also with a rich variety of vegetables. China is the world's largest producer of not only fruit and vegetables, but also meat and eggs and seafood. Millions of people are benefiting from the improved diet brought about by social development. FAST, the world's biggest spherical telescope, has an aperture of 500 meters. Independently researched and developed in China, it is called the sky eye. Nan Ren Dong is known as the father of the sky eye. In 1994, he gave up a high paying job abroad to return to China and create the country's own super telescope. He devoted the last 20 years of his life to the project's site selection, viability studies, design, and construction. The scientific spirit never dies, and the opening of new scientific pathways never stops. Today, China's younger generation are ready to take up the baton 
and forge ahead with major scientific plans and projects. In Beijing, young scientists are opening up infinite possibilities for the independent research and development of China's next generation of aerospace aviation technology. In Xi'an, a team of aviation R&D engineers with an average age of 30 are recognized as the most talented young designers in the industry. Chengdu's energetic young people are creating the future of maglev trains. At Wuxi's key national labs, young people are challenging the world record in the efficiency of silicon solar cells. A team of quantum scientists in Hefei, with an average age of 35, have, for the first time in history, successfully demonstrated high-dimensional quantum teleportation. 2,400 meters beneath the Earth's surface in Sichuan, young scientists are searching for the existence of dark matter. China is fully equipped and ready to begin independent research in an area that is at the leading edge of global scientific research. The China of today is no longer just a home for Chinese people but a partner for everyone around the globe. This ancient Eastern civilization has made a leap through time. It awoke from its slumber, has experienced rapid growth, and is achieving its great transformation. As China has entered the new era, its growth has brought profound changes to the world. China is continuing to unleash its economic potential. On average, it accounts for 30% of the world's annual economic growth. In 2016, the eyes of the world turned to Hangzhou and the G20 summit. 35 state leaders and heads of international organizations came together on the shores of West Lake. The global economy had once again reached a key stage in its development, and the world was focused on China. The G20 summit in Hangzhou, for the first time, made the issue of development a priority in decisions concerning global macroeconomic policy frameworks. During the summit, also for the first time, an action plan pertaining to the UN's 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda was drafted, and a plan to collectively support the development of the African continent and underdeveloped countries was drawn up. China was demonstrating that it was prepared to shoulder its responsibilities as a major world power. China is uh, one of the central components of today's international community. In a world that, being multipolar, requires also multilateral forms of governance, I think China today has a very important role to play. For Africa, we are so happy to have a friend to help us grow our own economies, modernize our own economies, and at the end of the day, also become middle-income countries or perhaps developed countries in the future. It has been said of the ocean that its grandeur is such that it could swallow mountains. Today, the ocean that is China's economy stirs up an image of a mighty tide and intricate currents. Chinese people everywhere, whether living in China or abroad, have experienced the titanic changes their country has undergone. In Toronto, Canada, hundreds of Chinese people have gathered to send their blessings to their homeland through song. Hello, 
In his classic work, Passing Ling Ding Yang, the Song Dynasty poet, Wen Tian Shang, wrote, all men are mortal, but my loyalty will illuminate the annals of history. The opening of the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge will invigorate the economy of the entire Greater Bay Area in southern China. A new city cluster is rising on the world map. The banks of the Yangtze, the river that has nurtured Chinese civilization, are bursting with new life thanks to the policy of prioritizing the ecosystem and green development. This will become the world's biggest inland river economic belt in terms of potential development scale and influence. The Xiong'an new area provides a solution to the challenge of coordinating the development of Beijing, Tianjin, and Hebei. The whole of northern China is becoming a new economic growth pole. This is a city of the future, a project of national significance. It is glittering with the lights of a new era. With our hearts, we kindle our dreams. With our hands, we set our future free. As time has passed, so the astonishing creative power of the Chinese people has created countless miracles. In the hands of the Chinese people, the great Chinese dream will be held high and a glorious new era will be ushered in. Oh. 